Hi everybody, it's Emily on Sailing Vessel Temptress, and today on Anchors to Zinks, we're helping you learn some more liveaboard lingo, and today we're talking about anchors. So today we're talking about anchors. What is an anchor? What are the different types of anchors that you might hear about? What are the different parts, and how do you talk about them? So what is an anchor? We all know what an anchor is, right? It looks like this, or maybe like this. According to Merriam-Webster, the definition of an anchor is a device usually made of metal attached to a ship or boat by a cable and cast overboard to hold it in a particular place by means of a fluke that digs into the bottom. Other ways that people might refer to anchors is calling it the hook, as in drop the hook or raise the hook. Um, they also might say what type of anchor they have. They might just say my mantis or my rock nut or my old CQR uh, when they're referring to the anchor. These are all different ways that you might, if you're sitting in a bar or a restaurant and you're hearing sailors talk about anchors, these are all ways that they might talk about the anchor. Anchors come in different sizes and different shapes. Generally, the bigger the boat, the bigger the anchor is going to be because the more staying power you're going to need to hold it. But a lot of the power in an anchor comes from the shape that it is. Um, if you're used to smaller boating, you might be using little like grapnel, like hook type anchors, or there's something called a mushroom anchor, which we don't really use uh, with big boats or yachts. That's more of uh, made for a mooring. So the types that you'll see very commonly on boats and yachts of this size are going to be a fluke style anchor. Fluke style anchors are pretty common in this bay and loop on where we have older boats. They used to be kind of the, the best thing for the money and for the weight. Um, those are called fluke style anchors because they're mostly fluke. Some examples of these would be a Danforth and a Fortress. We also have a plow style anchor, which sort of digs in like this. Uh, CQR is going to be a, a well-known brand of that. Some of them have a hinge on them. Some of them don't have a hinge and they're more solid. We used to have a big uh, CQR uh, knockoff, but um, we've recently upgraded to a scoop anchor, which sort of scoops into the bottom. Some common examples of those are going to be a mantis, a rachna, and a spade. There's something called a claw anchor. Uh, Probably the most common one would be a Bruce anchor. Uh, Clark is not a fan of these, um, but some people do use them. The anchor we're used to all seeing on Popeye's arm is sort of a traditional or a fisherman's anchor, and that's gonna have that that uh, sort of classic shape where you've got the, uh, the flukes as those sort of fish hook spikes, and then you've got the stock going across the top and a big long shank, kind of that classic look. They aren't super popular. We have a big foldable uh, Grumman anchor that we use as a storm anchor. It, collapses all up in a really cool way. If we've got some footage, I'll pop it up there for you. Our friend Conrad also has kind of this more traditional fisherman style anchor, but they aren't super common nowadays. They're kind of made for tattoos and, uh, and wall decor. <laughs> Today we're just talking about the basics of these anchors, but if you really want a more deep dive into which ones are best for sand or mud or rock or the different sizes, uh, check out the more comprehensive capable cruising guide we done on anchors a couple years ago. It's linked right up there. So let's talk about the parts of an anchor. If you're describing a problem or talking to somebody about an anchor, you don't want to say the stick thingy or the whole thingy. Uh, you want to be able to use the right term. So let's look at the basics of what is incorporated in an anchor. So starting from the top, you probably have an eye where uh, your anchor rotor, or your anchor line connects, or sometimes there's a swivel or um, a shackle that goes there that connects it to your boat. From there, you will have a shank going down usually, and that's going to connect to uh, the main area of the anchor. There's a crown, which sort of is the part where everything comes together. And from there, you'll be able to see the fluke, which depending on whether you've got a scoop anchor or a plow anchor, um, it's where the, the fluke is really what digs into the ground, whatever that looks like. It might be spiky, it might be scoopy, it might be plowy, but that fluke is what actually is digging into the sand and giving you that holding power. Uh, there's often something called a stalk, and sometimes it's that crossed line on the top of a traditional anchor on the more modern scoop anchors. It's more of a rounded, almost a handle looking sort of thing. But the purpose of that stalk is to keep your anchor from going in upside down and not being effective. You can imagine if you had uh, sort of this claw shape, you want it to go in and dig into the sand. If it goes in like this, it's just going to drag across the bottom. And that's uh, we'll talk about setting the anchor in a little bit, but um, the stock is what keeps it going in right way and kind of keeps it from, from being in the wrong orientation. Right, this is our Mantis, our anchor. This is our main anchor that we trust the yacht to all the time. It's a Mantis 85. It's actually a little oversized and we like it that way. 
Uh, the parts on here, this would be the shank. This would be the crown where it all ties together. This is the fluke that digs in. This is the stock that keeps it from rolling upside down and going in the wrong way. This is a 25 pound Danforth deep set. It's probably the best anchor in terms of holding in sand with a lightweight anchor that's gonna have a lot of digging and staying power for you. Uh, we don't use it as a primary anchor. We use it as sort of a secondary uh, storm anchor. There is a company called Fortress that makes a, an aluminum version of this, which obviously it's gonna be lighter per the size. So that's another option. These are both uh, fluke style anchors. And the parts of this are gonna be the shank, the stock, the crown, and of course, the fluke. The reason they're called a fluke anchor is because they're basically all fluke. So in terms of verbs or using anchor in a sentence, um, again, some people refer to their anchor as their hook. That's a very common way uh, to talk about your anchor when you're a liveaboard or you're sailing. Um, we will say, we will come into a new bay, we're gonna drop the hook. We're going to drop the anchor, let the anchor out so that it can uh, dig into the bottom. So dropping the hook or dropping the anchor. Uh, on the other side, when we're ready to leave, we're going to raise the anchor. In an old-fashioned way, you might say weigh the anchor. If you've heard that term, anchors away, it's not anchors away, it's anchors away. Uh, it means to bring the anchor up. Something else that is common, um, if you don't trust your anchor super well, or if it's uh, a little bit uh, questionable bottom, is diving on your anchor, which means you put your anchor down, you drop the anchor, and then you're actually going to get in the water and go down with goggles, presumably, and check and make sure that it, the anchor has set. That would be the term for it. it's actually grabbing. The anchor is set. Um, the other uh, term that might be useful is kedging. If you've run aground with your boat, which means you took your boat where it was a little too shallow for your boat and you're stuck, uh, one of the ways you can get off is by taking a uh, anchor that's attached to your boat out in your dinghy to a deeper area, setting it, and then basically instead of pulling up the anchor, you are pulling your boat to meet the anchor and that's called kedging off um, when you've run aground. So there's another verb for you. So, now we know what an anchor is, we've talked about the types, we've talked about the parts, and we've talked a little bit about how people talk about anchors. Are you up on your liveaboard lingo? Let's review. That's today's episode all about anchors. What other liveaboard terms do you know that do with anchors or the letter A? Leave them in the comments below. Also leave us your predictions for what you think we'll cover next episode when we move on to letter B. Thanks as always to our patrons for helping to keep our channel going. And if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell. Consider sharing this with a friend and leave us a comment. All that helps keep our channel growing so that we can make more content for you. Thanks for watching. I'm Emily on Sailing Vessel Temptress. See you all next time.